Hi, and welcome to the World Game Podcast, episode 295. It's me, David. Never really say my full name, do I? Because it just sounds weird, like talking about yourself in the third person. Anyway, David Cameron. Hi, I'm here. It's just me this week. <clears throat> the obsessive compulsive gamer is absent again. Hopefully we'll try and get a few more guests to come on. We're nearly at the 300 number. I don't know whether I'm going to invite a couple of guests on or not. But we'll see what happens. Please visit our website, which is wantgaming.co.uk. And, yeah, buy the merch. So more t-shirts. I think it's about £19 or something. It's not bad. It's a nice little design. It's cool. But anyway, this week we're sponsored by Games Inspired Music, an album that was created for our animated cartoon series sort of thing. But unfortunately, um, I didn't have £12,000 to carry on the thing. And then when we got the Kickstarter all up and sorted and done, the main star of the show, unfortunately, stabbed someone on New Year's Eve and got arrested. And they couldn't go on the American talk shows where it was going to be like announced of the Kickstarter campaign. And so we all shook hands and just walked away from the deal. So yay! So a lot of the music that was um, in the making for that series, we released it just as an album. 20% of each sale will go to the Child's Play charity, so please help us by helping them. Um, It's a great cause, it's a great charity, so please help as much as we can. So I guess we'll just start off by saying the games I've been playing this week are Game Guru Max for the PC. I've eventually got the PC up and running. I've got the game working. My PC is crap. It is absolute crap. But the game works okay and it runs okay. It's not good. But it runs okay, so I'm happy playing around, messing about with it, and see if I can actually get a game up and running for myself. Uh, I think I've only done the first episode. I did a, a one, like, a quick look at the, the the program to have a look, see if it worked, and now I've done the first episode of the series to see if I can make a game. So. Give that a watch if you're interested. The, I think I'll be putting these up every Monday, I believe, that they'll, they'll go up. Um, but yeah, so we'll do a Game Guru Max series. Next up, uh, in honour of my 41st birthday, which was just last couple of days ago, I played a couple of my favourite games when I was a kid. So, F1 World Grand Prix 2, um, I played this on the Dreamcast, it was a Dreamcast emulator, I can't be bothered to look through my Dreamcast stuff, uh, I've got like a big massive emulator on this tablet, I'm going to play hundreds of games, it's quite cool, but World Grand Prix 2 is one of the best Formula 1 games I remember as a kid, it looked amazing, it played well, and... To top it off, I also played V Rally 2 on the Dreamcast. And again, this game was it was good for the time. It played really well. It looked gorgeous. And another game which I would say didn't age well, but even when it first released, I thought it was an abomination of a game. It was terrible. And that was Sensible Soccer 98 on the PlayStation, the, the original PlayStation. The game's terrible, the frame rate's terrible, the graphics are terrible. It's it's a terrible game. It is really, really a terrible game. I, I know John Hare has, has said many times that it was not good. But you should be embarrassed. This was the Sensible Soccer name. It's the legacy. And it was the first time coming to a full like 3D engine. And it was bad. It was really bad. They did do better when they released the Sensible Soccer 2006, I think it was. In my opinion, that should have been 
a launch game for the Xbox 360. It could have just looked and ran almost the same. And I think it had done well because there was like the FIFA World Road to World Cup 07, I think it was. Was it that one? On the original on the 360 that launched that looks like mannequins, it was horrible, it was weird. So I think the Sensible Soccer 2006 could have done really well as a launch game for the 360. But, we'll never know, Codemasters, you did us dirty. You did us dirty. Anyway, another good game, Tempest 4000. Now this game started development uh, by the, I'm going to, I've completely, I should write these things down on my notes, but I don't, just write the name of the game. Uh, the original developer of the Tempest 2000 and the Tempest 3000, who made the, a lot of games about camels or llamas, llama, llama soft, who... It was a bit weird, a little bit spaced out maybe. Did a lot of games on like the Spectrum, the C64, things like that. And he was making a... What do you call it? Do you call it a, a barrel shoot? A, I don't even know what the hell you call them now. But it, you know what Tempest is. It's an into the screen where you spin around the orbit of the shape and shoot downwards into the, the screen where the enemies are coming towards you and the game looks mint it uh, these games are at uh, tempest 2000 probably the reason to buy an atari jaguar um tempest 3000 was an exclusive game on the is it the new one neon new one i think it was a new one and tempest 4000 as i said it started off as that Atari said, you can't do that. We've got the exclusive rights for these barrel shooter things. And they basically said to him, why don't you just rename it to Tempest 4000 and we'll release it for you. So that got done. So Tempest 4000, it looks very similar to Tempest 3000. It looks very similar to Tempest 2000. And they all play really well. They all have mint music. So I'd recommend those sort of games. Now, I don't know why I played this next game, but I had a quick go at it. Pure Pool. And this was 
It was, I think it was quite an early game on the Xbox 360. And it was alright. It was alright. It looks alright. It plays well. Nothing to jump about. Nothing to get excited about. But, you know, it was alright. Now, one of the best games I've played this year, Tunic. It's a cute little thing. And I've only had a quick dabble with it. I've not discovered all these Easter eggs and all these special things that everyone's going on about. But from the little I've played, I love the style, I love the art, I love the gameplay. And I could see myself sitting down and playing much more of it. But... Doing like 13 hour shifts, doing night shifts and sleeping through the day. I don't have time to play like the Souls sort of games, um, Elden Ring. It's like I love them, but I can't just sit there for two or three hours playing one game. It's like I have to play something for 20 minutes, then quickly play something else for 20 minutes just to get a dabble of all the games that are out. Uh, next game, I have no idea what the hell this game was. I have no idea how the hell to pronounce it. And I have no idea who the hell Aerial Knight is. But Aerial Knights never yield. And this was a uh-huh. really cool, smart looking side on like, 3D minimalist uh, sort of game. And it's like a, an endless runner sort of thing, but with a story mixed in. And it seemed okay, nothing major. And again, I am. Um, Appalled by the amount of free to play ish mobile ports that come onto the, the Xbox or the PlayStation platforms or even Steam, and you're basically paying £10 for the right to have it played on a TV. But I don't know. So, next up Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Now, Dragon's Dogma, I bought because it looked, I thought it looked amazing. I really wanted to get into it. I haven't played it ever. I've had this game on my Xbox for about four years, five years, whatever it's been. And I thought, do you know what? I'll sit down and have a quick go on it. Nah. The character movement is just not for me. It just doesn't feel good. The Elden Ring. Amazing. Amazing combat, the movement. The fluidity of everything. This Dragon's Dogma just feels very much like a budget sort of game. It, you, you're bouncing around and it's just not very good. But unfortunately, that's my opinion. I'm probably wrong. In if I sat there and gave it another two, three, four hours, I might get into it and love it. But unfortunately, we're not there. So moving on to a game that I absolutely adore, and it's probably. One of my favourite games of all time, and that is Metro 2033. I love this game so much, the atmosphere is oozing from the walls. It is dark, clunky, chunky. It is amazing what these developers have made with this game. The engine is amazing, it's gorgeous. So, of course, I had to play Metro Last Light, and I think they've cleaned bits up, they've skimmed things off the thing, off the lines, they've made it a little bit stream, more, more streamlined, more easier to get into, but I just feel that the first game grabbed me so much more. And remember, please, uh, watch our Ridge Racer 6 series, that's every Thursday. I think we're on to episode 10 now to see if we can complete Ridge Racer 6. So I'm getting into that now, so let's see how far we can go.
So that is all that I've been playing this week. So we'll have a quick break and then we'll come back with the news for this week. So back in 12 seconds. And we're back. It's still me, David, from One Up Gaming. It's episode two hundred and ninety-four of the One Up Gaming podcast. Um, please visit the website oneupgaming.co.uk. So we have the news for this week. So the news is da, 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 da. so. First of all, it looks as though Dwayne Johnson's. The movie studio is or has got the right to produce the movie or a, a movie based on It Takes Two with Amazon. Uh, so Dwayne The Rock Johnson, why is it still calling him The Rock? He really probably doesn't like that. Mm. But anyway, so It Takes Two could be alright. Um... So I guess we'll just have to see what comes from that. Uh, I wonder if the Rock will star in this or whether if it'll just be his company, his money going into it. Um, so moving on to the second bit of news. And the second bit of news is... It looks as though the fans... Of Sega, so Sonic Origins was announced, which will be a collector's remake bundle of, I believe it's Sonic 1, Sonic 2, was it Sonic CD, and Sonic 3 Knuckles, I believe. So you can play them all as original, or you can play them all as the re revamped, re remade sort of versions. So there's like a lot of locked off DLC content. Uh, remasters collection of Sonic 1, 2, 3 and CD has announced. Eight pieces of content not included. Spread across. So that is the image of that. So it looks like you have to buy that version to get that, that version to get them, that version to get that. So there's, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get different things. I don't like this. It's like, I think that you should just buy the game and if you buy it, you get certain things. You shouldn't be locked off uh, from everything else. Um, I hate DLC and stuff. It's annoying. You should buy the game and get what you want. So, next up, the Twisted Metal TV series, Eric Andre Shaw director joins the project. I have no idea what Eric Andre Shaw. Uh, the 39 year old action filmmaker will direct several episodes of the Twisted Metal series as well as join the project as an ex ex executive producer. Anthony Mackey, don't know who that is. I guess we'll we'll have a look. We'll watch it. I'll give it a chance. I do like watching certain things. Um, we'll give it a good go. That is for sure. Uh, the next bit of news is something I never thought I would be sort of saying after all of the stuff that's happened in the past. But Amy Henning is making a new Star Wars game. Uh, Untitled Star Wars game is Henning's second project with Skydance Media. So she was making a game with uh, Visceral, Vis, yeah, Visceral Games, the guys who did the Dead Space, I believe. Uh, she was making a game with them for Star Wars, like a proper third-person story-driven action adventure, like an uncharted -y sort of game. Uh, but with the closure of... Uh, visual games 
uh, spelled the end of Amy Henning's first attempt at a Star Wars game. Uh, <laughs> so basically, they've just uh, Sky Dance Media have just announced that Henning is working on a brand new game set in the Star Wars universe, but little is known so far. So I'm not going to go into everything because nothing is known. We'll come back to it when we have more details. So the next bit of news is a weird sort of one. And that is Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio are reportedly getting big budget reboots. Now I can understand Jet Set Radio. Because for me Jet Set Radio is an open world grindy spray gorgeous looking action game and that can work in any generation of consoles any generation of the the games being made on the other hand crazy taxi i don't see this being that good i mean imagine the grand theft auto games where you couldn't get out of the car and you only had to drive from a to b to B to C to C to E to E to Z Z back to B destinations on the map within a time limit and that might be quite cool in an arcade setting where you put a quid in but in an actual full featured game the only way I could see this making money is it's basically like a free to play sort of game and you go on and Say your favourite food is KFC, you can buy the KFC pack for like a dollar, two two dollars, and then when you're playing the game, KFC is featured in the game. Or you love uh, Michael Jackson, you pay a dollar, and as you're driving around, you can pick up a character that is Michael Jackson. But you know, it'll be like. Hundreds of games, hundreds of characters, hundreds of places, placements, stadiums, just anything that they can license. You can buy the music, buy the offspring, buy different tunes. And all this um, could be amazing. But, again, I just don't know. I really don't know how it's going to work. I would love to see some ideas that Sega have, but we'll see. So, Streets of Rage uh, film from the creator of John Wick is in the works. Now this, I could like to see. Uh, I'd like to see how this sort of goes. So, classic 90s beat him up. Uh, Streets of Rage... Uh, so it looks like they've got a script working on so yeah it's I'm actually quite interested in this because it could be quite cool but again no real details no real information we'll come back when there is more to talk about with the Streets of Rage sort of series uh, and then the last bit of news that I have <clears throat> is, I guess the big bit of news is Jason Momoa, Momoa, Momoa I can never say his name, uh, is reportedly in talks to star in the Minecraft movie. Uh, the movie also has a new director. But I guess the biggest sort of bit is that Warner Bros. is right to the Minecraft movie, which has been delayed and delayed and delayed, expires January 2023. So if they don't have the game, the, the movie in the works by that time, then they lose the rights to the Minecraft movie and then someone else could bid on it. So I think they're just quickly whacking together writers, directors, any star that's a big name into this in the hope that 
it'll find the footing and then they can carry on a franchise and make loads of money. Because at the end of the day, it is money. So it looks like Jared Hess is to direct. And he's best known for Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho Libre. Two movies which I thought were a little bit overrated. Uh, but again, more video game movie rights and all the other bits and bobs. I guess we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. <clears throat> and lastly, we will go into the top 40 games. So, number 40, Assassin's Creed Van ha- Valhalla, Marvel's Avengers, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Lego Jurassic World, Far Cry 6, number 35, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, The Last of Us Part 2, Sonic Mania Plus, Grand Theft Auto, The Trilogy, The Definitive Edition, number 30, Ghost, Ghost of Shusima, this is why I never talk about this game, because I can't pronounce it, Director's Cut, Luigi's Mansion 3, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, F1 2021, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, number 25, Fortnite Minty Legends Pack, Super Mario Odyssey, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, Just Dance 2022, Ghostwire Tokyo, number 20, Sonic Colors Ultimate, Dying Light 2 Stay Human, Call of Duty Vanguard, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales is at 15. Lego Harry Potter Collection. Mario Party Superstars. WWE 2K22. Minecraft. And number 10, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Number 9, Grand Theft Auto 5. Number 8, Elden Ring. Number 7, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Number 8, no, number 6, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Number 5, Pokemon Legends Arceus, number 4, FIFA 22, number 3, Horizon Forbidden West, number 2, Gran Turismo 7, and at number 1, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, and thank you to Games Press and GFK Entertainment Software Charts for the all formats, and that is me saying thank you. Right, so... That is the news, that is the games. It's me, David, Want Gaming, episode 294. Saying thank you all. Is it 294? Is it 295? 295. I'm way well, not, not way out, am I? Anyway, 295. Thank you. Please go to our website, wantgaming.co.uk. Check out our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash OUG. We're on uh, buy the t-shirts from our official website, which is wantgaming.co.uk, and I believe it's in the top right-hand corner. Click on that. Give you a load of styles to choose from. If you click on any of the pictures, it'll take you to the page where you'll have a choice of two or three different colours for each design. Uh, Games Inspired Music is available now. 20% of each sale will go to Charles Play Charity. We also have our 100 first podcasts available from audiobooksontape.com and one pound of each sale will go to the Child's Play charity. Uh, please use the Amazon links on the website. If you're ordering anything from Amazon, just click on the link. It'll send you straight to Amazon, buy what you're buying. We'll get a tiny little 20p from Amazon for advertising Amazon. We're on Facebook, just search one Up Gaming, you'll find us. We're on YouTube, just search one Up Gaming. I believe we've now got 1,200 subscribers or is it 2000 i can't remember it's a few thank you all so much for subscribing and again if you're watching this on youtube subscribe share like uh what else is there i don't even know but whatever you're doing doing it well um we're on twitch which is twitch.tv slash oug official if you're gonna tweet us it's at oug official if you want to email us any questions it's Contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. And again, thank you all so much for watching. It's been me, David, from One Up Gaming, episode 295, saying thank you so much. And I guess, Conte, take it away. Go, baby, baby.
go, baby. Go, baby. I love you, said I love you. Never put nothing above you. Won't let go once I can hug you on the floor. They hate because you let them know that you the ish. Now they hate and I because you at the club and proving it. And so they choosing it too late because now they using it. Can't wait from how you doing it. I know that they pursuing it. You will kindly tell them now my baby's here to watch me go. And for him, I put on a show. You just blessed to be here. So my baby goes, goes on. My body rolls on. I tell her, hold on. We can look at clothes. We clothes on. Been on it so long. I think we gotta go. Gotta go. Get my grown man on. You know that I love you so. Thank you. We're trying to get everybody on too.